Welcome to the Relatable Oklahoma Realtors Podcast, the show that sets out to demystify the world of real estate. Whether you're a first-time home buyer, investor, or a realtor with years of experience, this is where real estate is discussed and explained. Join me now for our hosts, Stacy and Merle Stricker. Welcome to our podcast, Relatable Oklahoma Real Estate. I'm Burl. Realtors. Wow. Realtors. Oh my gosh. We're on like podcast 15. If you just Google it, we're there. We're so, there. Yeah. I'm going to start doing the introduction. All right. You better do the introduction. Hey, guess what, guys? Welcome to Relatable Oklahoma Realtors. I'm Stacy Stricker. I'm Burl. <laughs> and we're here with Matt. Matt, hey, Matt Brooks. Hey. Matt Brooks is in the house. Matt. I, I, and Madeline. I just want, and Madeline. Madeline I want you to know that I've wanted you on the podcast for a while, but Stacy kept saying, Oh, later we'll ask them later. And, and finally you're here. So wow, Stacy. That's a bold face wow. lie. That's a lie. <laughs> Bro's the one that said, Why would you want Matt on the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> We're glad you're here. Matt, hey, if you don't you mind, an- would you answer her real quick? Oh, I'm sorry. What? what Madeline honey? wants to know. Yes. That's, I have no clue. So Madeline is Karen's daughter. Karen, she's, she's fine over She's on here. the podcast as well. Yeah. <laughs> say hi, Madeline. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Matt, so how long have you been in real estate? And first of all, and just kind of give us a little background on what made you decide I, to get in real estate. I am just about at three years right now. And I kind of always wanted to do real estate. I thought about it for a l- many years. Yeah. And I was working in the oil field and office settings, and I was just kind of done with it and kind of burned out and had done it for a long time, just burned out on it. Mm -hmm. So I decided to get my real estate license, and I've known Stacy for a very long time. So I texted her and said, hey, if I get my license, can I come work with y'all? And I hurried up and got it real quick, and I came to work. I'm kind of, you know, Stacy's told me the story about how, like, you did it part-time, Um, for a a while. Yes. How long was that period of doing it part time? Well, I actually, when I started, I did not, I came in every day when I first started, I didn't have a job at that point in time. And then I did get a job. I actually worked the job for about a year. So Mm -hmm. I was part time for about a year after that. And then I've been full time for, yeah, again, over. Let's talk about how Matt was an overachiever on taking his like doing his real estate stuff. <laughs> he did it all online, had it done in like, wh- how long? Like, I finished my classes in like two weeks. I thought it was two oh, weeks. Wow. That's 90 not, hours in two weeks. That's not yeah. normal. By the way, those are in that, in some of those CEUs or online education, 90 hours is supposed to equal 90 hours. And some of them, they don't. Mm-hmm. You can just breeze through them. But in that particular course, you can't breeze through it. You're literally taking 90 hours. And so right. when you say yeah. that, it's like a full-time job for two weeks. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it really is. And then I, that was when COVID was kind of first starting. And so I had to wait a couple of weeks to go take my test afterwards. Yeah, But I had that and I surprisingly passed on my first time and I wasn't sure. And I walked out of there and I look at the woman and I said, did I pass? And she goes, yeah, you did. And I was like, okay, great. <laughs> you know, I like, believe it or not, there's a part of your story that really kind of inspires me. And I think it like, it speaks to deeper. It's like, you know, I think at some point you realize that if I need to go all in, I think fear kind of drives yeah. all of us when you get into anything new. Yeah. So like, can I make a living? You know, I don't want to go broke, those kind of things. And I think the story of like you going all in, even though everything wasn't in line and everything 100%, the earning power was not there quite yet when you went all in. I had I had gotten pretty good at that point in time with it, but I mean, it was still a little bit stressful at first because i was like oh gosh what if i what if i don't do this what if everything just fizzles out like you know there's always that but i at the same time now i cannot imagine actually having to go to another job yeah (laughs) because i'm like there's just too much to do in a day (laughs) yeah i will tell me what you think so like when matt said let me back up so matt said when he started he was not working another job at the time so and we were we were in transition of trying to move mm-hmm. here. So Matt was sitting in sharing an office with Peyton and I. We were pretty crammed in at that time because mm-hmm. we knew we were moving to this location. So I'm curious from your perspective, like, was that valuable use coming in and just listening 
it was very valuable because I did hear conversations between you and Peyton and you with clients and Peyton with clients and just different things. And I know I did quite a bit of shadowing with y'all too. I would go along at listing appointments with Peyton or Stacy and I'd go show with them. I mean, I think there was a lot to that. And then just, I mean, even like when the apartments got listed, I was like, oh, I remember Stacy dealing with apartments when I first started. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> we might want to prepare for phone calls. That was great because you did list and sold some apartments in Sarah yes. recently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those were a nightmare. Not yours. Yeah. Mine were a nightmare. Yeah. I remember all that happening. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I'm a big believer on, which we have floor time and not every... Not everyone has a brick and mortar building or they do floor time and, and it's not required, but, um, I just feel like it's so important to come in the office because you do learn. And that's how I learned because I listened and just hung out when I, I started. I mean, even not just y'all, but even just sometimes listening to Sherry who had been yes. in the business for years. I mean, just listening to her sometimes or asking her questions and stuff. Yeah. Cause she was always willing to help you. I mean, just little things like that definitely help you out when you're first starting. Yeah. So Sherry, I sat across from her when I very first started. So I listened to everything that she said. And really, she gave me um, a lead, and that turned into my first sale. My first closing was with Sherry. That's sweet. I know. I think my commission was like $700. (laughs) It was a small house. (laughs) Well, I think those two, the the two parts of your story that I find inspirational is that first one that you took the leap and said, okay, I need to be all in or I need to not be all in. Yeah. And, and the fact that you basically went all in, I think that is, I think it's important because I think if you continue to work half in and half out. <laughs> on that, I'm so sorry. On <laughs> you got. I wish you guys could see this. Madeline is like giving Burl um, a massage yes. and rubbing his head. I think it's like, it's hard to be in two places and really put all your energy in you know, into it. And you decided <laughs> to go to three straight to real estate and 100% into real estate. The second part of it is kind of what she's saying. And actually, Stacy's told me that before that you, because I'm not good at that, is uh, that you being involved in the office and you listening to kind of mm-hmm. seeing what's going on and being present with, and you learned from other people. And, yes. and so that's something that actually, when she told me that story, I was like, you know, it, it made me realize that I, that's an area that I could grow in as well. I mean, those real estate classes, they get you to pass the test. They do not teach you how to write a contract, how no. to deal with people, yeah. any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like for Peyton and I, you know, we were in the middle of trying to move offices and, you know, we were growing at a pretty fast pace. So we would have leads come in, you know, off of our listings or whatever. And we would look up like, who's here? Oh, Mm -hmm. Matt's here. Matt, can you want to work with this? Can you take this lead? And so, you know, it was, that's a a big one. I think I've learned that quick that, I mean, when you're starting out, you don't have leads, you don't have, you know, everybody, it's, it's two parts. One, it's one of your fears is like, how am I ever going to get my first like client? And the second fear that I thought is, is like, you don't realize is that by being present, that's where you're going to get them by just somebody else not wanting to work it. Yes. That's actually my first residential lead. I had some land that I listed for my brother, but then like my first actual lead, actually my brother's land was the second one. That was the first sale. That's related to everybody. First Have I mentioned lead that? that I got was a floor time lead for a listing. Yeah. The guy walked in, said, I have a house I need to get listed. We went and listed it. No. Yeah. And got it sold. Yeah. He had it as a rental property for a long time, right? He had, as a, he had owned the house for 30 something years since it had been built. And That's he crazy. had moved to Childress and then they used it as a rental property all those years and yeah. then decided it was time to sell it because they were moving to Washington to be closer to their kids. Wow. I think that's a big difference also in real estate compared to other uh, professions where you might have, you know, customers and, and sales is that you actually are going to remember almost every single client because the time period that you work for them is not a short time period. There's a long relationship yeah, that you true. build up to the close. And that's something I've noticed. It's like, in a lot, like, let's just take a restaurant example. You may wait day. So you may have an hour of their time. Mm-hmm. And then it's, so you can see why that's, you know, hard to, easy to forget, yeah, easy right. to, 
forget their name, easy to forget things. But when you have a relationship with them for months and sometimes even longer than that, dealing with one transaction, yes, it, it helps build that relationship. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and in real estate, like this is, you're dealing with people's largest asset, you know, and so we have to take that very serious and, and it can get stressful. Like we carry, and you know this too, cause you're experiencing it. We carry that stress with them, mm-hmm. you know, they mm-hmm. might be in a financial strain or, you yeah. know, Going with or, divorce or, oh something. my gosh, it, you know, it's been on the market two months and it hasn't sold yet. Cause Elk City has gone through some some lows, you know, over the years where houses took three to four months to sell, maybe longer, maybe mm-hmm. a year. And that stresses people out. Yeah. So um, but we carry that stress with them. I, I, I'm curious, Matt, the, like you being like from here, local, you know, in this area, how do you think that that's impacted, like you being, uh, uh, especially in the beginning, you being a new agent? And, you know, I don't think we give enough credit to, hey, I'm from here. I'm from this area. I know people. I think it's definitely helped me. I mean, even I've had leads that were just people that I knew from here that had moved off to Edmond or Oklahoma City, Yukon areas. And I mean, there's been plenty of that kind of stuff, too, that's helped me out up there as well. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I definitely think that being from here has helped me because I know so many people. And I mean, I have yeah. gotten a lot out of just working my sphere to you. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's where I think I got a, quite a few people was from my sphere. And then also just from being there, being mm-hmm. on floor time and stuff, I get a lot that way. So I think you saying like knowing a lot of people has helped and they and they're not always in this area. So and that kind of just is taking us into another market that we're about to open. So Matt has worked in Edmond, in Yukon, in Oklahoma City, which for those that don't know, that's an hour and a half, two hours away from where we live. Mm -hmm. Well, so Matt came to Peyton and I at the end of each year, we do one-on-ones with everyone. And during his one-on-one, he said, I would like to, you know, expand and Mm -hmm. be a broker and go to Yukon. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so that time has come. We signed a lease. Actually, yes. I should say this. We have submitted everything to sign the lease. <laughs> we did the application today. Picked a location. That's pretty exciting. Yes. That's what do you think the, the licensing process, uh, what was the big difference? Was it harder to do the broker or was it? I think curious? it freaked me out a little bit more because I did all my classes. I did those like way before I could take the test. Mm-hmm. I made sure it wasn't too far ahead of the time, but I went ahead and got it out of the way while I was just here. Mm-hmm. So I'd work on it a little bit while I was here and I didn't have anything else to do at that time. So I, um, and then I worked on it at home too, but I think I just got freaked out a little more by it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think the first time I took the test, I missed it by like one point. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, so would you say it was harder about the same or I think it was a little harder. Yeah. A little harder, but then mm-hmm. also a lot of repetition from the stuff that's just on your normal real estate license exam. Part of it was repetition. I think in almost every one of those tests that it's like, I think even now if I had to take the, the test right now, mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't pass it because you, you just almost retain it for the test. And then there's some information that you actually, you know, you continue to use every day, but mm-hmm. it's not enough to pass the test without studying. Exactly. You know? That's very true. Yeah. I, I'm like any test that I've ever taken like that. It's like, man, probably two months after I took it, I, I'm not sure I could pass it again. You just, no. Your brain. Like if I had to take the broker's test today, no. Yeah. I wouldn't. There's no way. <laughs> but people think the opposite of that, but it shows you test taking is really about memorization. It's about, there's, it's learning. Yes. You, know, you have yes. to study. Yeah. And that study. So. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, our focus is obviously to make sure we're following their guidelines, but there are definitely questions on there. It's designed to trick you. Yeah. Let's be mm-hmm. real clear on that. You yeah. know, yeah. it's. So Matt, I, like I do, when I think about what, you know, your story back to that, I think that like almost this is the way a new agent should do it is the kind of the way you did. Like when you're talking about, I was, I was present. I listened. I learned. You even talked about your spear, which, you know, somebody like me, I haven't done that yet. So mm-hmm. I think that like, shame on him. Almost like you. Girl. We, like, I've said this to him this week. Like, you like how he's trying to skip over this. Have, have we talked about this this week? 
about that your scare? About, yeah. Yeah. It's here. It's right there. That's not, that's not doing us any good. <laughs> no. no. But I think that like if somebody, <laughs> it's almost like, you know, here's the list of what you should do in order to be successful. And I feel like that you have done that. Like in this order, this is what you need to he do. He definitely did. Because then we would say, hey, this is what we did to start out. Like, hey, we worked expired listings. We worked for sale by owners. We worked out of state owners. And Matt, boom, 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 did it. There would be weekends where I would spend like the entire weekend doing mail outs. Like I yeah. would just mm-hmm. spend that entire weekend doing expired listings or for sale by owners or out of state land owners. I mean, I put in some hours on the weekends too for it. Yeah. Yeah. But I do feel like that time also just being here, if I didn't have something to work on, I did my post license classes during that time. I did my mail outs and stuff. I did all of the different, I did my sphere during mm-hmm. that time. I mean, yeah. I worked on things while I was here being present, Yeah, but I definitely think that that helped a lot just being up here and being present yeah. and stuff. Well, and you've also received other certifications yeah. Like you, you want to tell us about those? I've done my ABR, which is an accredited buyer's representative. I've done my SRS, which is a seller's rep- representative specialist. I've done my MRP, which is a military relocation professional. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I've also done the NARS commitment to excellence, too, which was a really interesting thing that taught you a lot about how to deal with people in different situations and scenarios mm-hmm. you might find yourself in. Wow. I, I had no clue about any of that. I mean, there's a lot. And so we have, so what has it been like over a year that you did the military? Yeah, it's been, I think, about a year and a half since I've done yeah. that one. So, and we have talked to the ladies in Altus because that's a, you know, there's an Air Force base there. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you it really should do this. Yeah, it really does. And Matt did it in two days. I think it's like a day or two. A day, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that there, especially where where we are, there's so many opportunities for there. There is a lot of relocation of uh, the military, and you know. And what's funny, I just talked to somebody recently who was stationed in Altus um, when they were, you know, when they were in the service, and then they got out, and now they're retiring. They want to move back, yeah. so there's a lot of a lot of that there, which also yeah. deals with VA loans, and and it, that even expands mm-hmm. what yeah. you're talking about for sure. Yeah, and so that opened Matt up to you know working with other lenders and mm-hmm. and getting other business. So it did. So if like for your advice, and I know you've mentored several people here that are new agents. I've seen you mentor them. So what is uh what what's some advice like, hey, this is my advice to you as a new agent. What's some things that I think you, you would give them? Definitely the be present. Yeah. Like when you're here you're learning. I mean, um and, you know, like I know with some of the agents and stuff, like one of the first things I tell them to, to do is their sphere. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's one of the first things that Stacy actually told me to do in Peyton was to do my sphere because then you can do your mail out to let everybody know you're a realtor because not everybody is present on Facebook mm-hmm. or something like that to see everything. So I do think that, you know, just being present and working on those things, take advice from everybody don't be don't think you know everything already because you mm-hmm. don't yeah. <laughs> yeah but you know just learning from other people i think is where you really you actually it actually uh, as you're talking it came to mind that like one of my struggles with like something like the sphere i think that some people have these preconceived notions maybe they dealt with it through like multi-level marketing and then you know mm-hmm. and so they have this like this uh, poor conception of what like a spear, a spear is and and these different things tactics yeah. we'll say okay and it's because of a bad experience in the past and yet i i what i hear from you is that it may it maybe if you have those preconceived it's all it's kind of back to what you're saying is like you you're not you don't know it all it meaning it could be think about it afresh or new um and look at this from a different light for sure. And start over kind of yeah. in some aspects of salesmanship and and how you do it. For sure. I that, I don't know. That's what I get out yeah. of it. Kind I mean, of for in me. Your, in your sphere, for those that know what we're talking about, it's like your sphere of influence. Um, Like people that you start with your family and then you kind of work out from there. Um, People that you've worked with in the past and you just keep going. Like in you, I've even added like people from church or, you know, my dentist, my doctor and, um, and I get business 
from yeah. those people. So, and then anyone new that I've sold mm-hmm. a property to or have gone on a listing appointment or even a first sale by owner that I've tried to get business from mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, you just keep adding to it and it grows and grows. And then obviously people fall off of that list too. Um, but I mean, it's growing. It's always growing. It is. Well, I think part of that is understanding that it's not like you're going to call and bug them to death. It's really putting it in front that you are a real estate agent, that you, when it comes time to make a, you know, buy a home, sell a home, yeah. that you are, that you can do that. It's really making them aware of anything. It's, it's funny because like recently I've had that pop up because, um, you know, relationships that I've had for years, but we just lost touch, you know, gone on with life. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, they're wanting to sell a house. Yeah. And had I put them on the spear, that might have been, a, you know, something I'd already put in front of them right, instead of finding sure. it out the, the the kind of backwards way, I guess. Right. Almost. Yeah. I mean, I really started working mine because when I first, I think the first six months I had my license, I like would go through my sphere and I would highlight all the people that I had seen buy a new house. Mm-hmm. That did not use me that had really no relationship with the realtor that they used. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I need to start working this harder. Mm-hmm. And I did. And they started using me. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that was a big eye opener on the sphere for me because I'm like, okay, that's 16 people right there that I just missed out on a sell. So let's wow. work this. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. That's well, good. Well, and I mean, if you had to summarize all that, like even the sphere and dealing with like being present, but you're talking about a lot of hustle there. There's a lot of hustle. There is. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's another word that people have misconstrued, but it's somebody like you're, you can listen to the story and you're like working every number one to educate yourself, mm-hmm. make yourself like more knowledgeable. Yeah. Cause you need to be the expert. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's really like, I, I don't know how many times I've used that adage or the, that motto is that be the expert. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes we think that that means different things, but really what it can be, it's like, how much can I educate myself to help my buyers, to help my sellers, to us, to be able to make very, you know, good decisions. And, right. You know, and I think that that's part of the hustle though. It's like, I don't know nobody. And and I think some people don't realize this. It's like you're not an employee. You're not, you're, you're here working. You can be here as little as much as you want. Yeah, you can work yes. it as little as much as you want, but you see through the story that well, it's the hustle. You're not going to get paid until you sell a house. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're not present, you're not pushing yourself, you're, you're not going to get paid. It's just really that simple. And I'm not a work from home person. I like being in the office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do not like to work from home. I like separation. When I'm home, I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> not that I'm not going to answer my phone still or anything, but I like being in the office when I'm working. I do too. I get very distracted at home. We've mm-hmm. talked about this here in the office yeah. a lot because you're here almost every day, even though you're not on floor every day. Mm-hmm. But if I'm at home, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm going to throw in a load of laundry. Let's clean this. And no, I can't do it. Well, I think that, especially during COVID, people thought that, oh my gosh, working at home is just, you know, the best. But you start to realize that, yeah, you might have been forced to do that, some people, some Mm -hmm. professions. But it is very difficult to separate, yeah. you know, those things. Because, of course, you're going to think about the load of laundry as you're talking about that. Yeah, so our industry did not. We were... Believe it or not, considered essential because people need housing. Well, I think that the the broker that I just talked to earlier, I think that they do from basically a home, no uh, brick and mortar, and yeah. and so. And, you- and there's a lot of people that um, you'll see a lot of people going that direction, um, but you know, Peyton and I, and you know, invested in this office to move to this location. I guess it's about. It'll be three years Mm -hmm. in September that we've been in this location um, because we believe in being a part of our community and having a place for everyone that hangs a license with us to have a place to bring their clients in. And we still get walk-ins, you know, as much as the industry has changed where, you know, you do it all on your phone and you know, people still want to walk in and sit down and they still call the landline. They don't necessarily (laughs) call everyone's cell phones um, because on our signs, we have our office landline on there. Um, But people want a place to come in. So, you know, and then we just bought a building in Altus. I mean, so we still believe in 
the brick and mortar Mm -hmm. and being a part of the community. So Matt, with you starting out, you know, being the broker at this new location, what if if you're going to sit down with like a new, like it doesn't even have to be like necessarily a new agent, but somebody wanting to work underneath you there at that office, what are the things that you're going to look for when you interview or when you talk to them and have that initial conversation? I mean, they need to be excited about working in real estate. I mean, <laughs> yeah. some people just given. do it for, I feel like there are people that just do it for money. I mean, and they don't really get excited about it. They just mm-hmm. want the check. I mean, you know, but I mean, I think just that and just also making sure that they kind of mesh well with us. I know that's been a big deal with Stacey and Peyton too, is just making sure it's someone that's actually going to mesh well together. Yeah. I know that there's been multiple times we get back from convention and Peyton will get a call about how well we all get along and everything. And I mean, I think that is due to a lot of just the making sure that everybody fits together kind of deal. It is I- important that we have the right people. We're not just bringing on everyone to have numbers. That's yeah. not what Peyton and I's goals are. That's not what we're here to do. I think it actually, and I, I mean, maybe you have some insight on it, Stacy, but I think you bring up a really good point because some people might just think that everybody in the office, if they don't know who's in the office, they might think that everybody in the office is really cookie cutters of each other and that's how you all get along. But that's not really what it is. There is some diversity there mm-hmm. in, in, in personalities, age, Etc. Yes. So right. I th- I'm I'm curious because I think people really want to know. It's like, do you can you think of a factor, uh, Matt or Stacy, that like you say, hey, this tells me that they fit well within our team, like this characteristic or this attribute of that person. Um, I really think you can just tell in the interview if you click or so not. Like a gut feeling. Kinda. Yeah. I mean, I will say and. I'm, we're not going to say names, but we were in the old office and we had interviewed this person twice. And I, I said, no, mm-hmm. Matt knows who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and Peyton was like, yeah, let's try. And um, it did not end up working out. Mm-hmm. And so, and I'm not saying right or wrong and not that this person was a bad person. It just wasn't a good fit. And they were not completely in real estate either. Mm-hmm. Um So I think we all learned from that point. And then I've picked people that were not a good fit either. So it's gone both ways. Matt, do you have any insight on that? I mean, I agree with Stacey. I never got interviewed, though. I uh, I already knew Matt really well because I had helped. I'd shown him his mom properties, helped them before. So I already knew them. And that's really how a lot of people have come on board. Right. I would say that, and and you can correct me if wrong, because you just brought up a point that I hadn't thought of, that it's almost (laughs) like you, like you, instead of them searching you out for a place to, it's you have searched them out first. I mean, it's definitely um, like we've known them. So Mm -hmm. that's how Matt came on board. And then, you know, Karen's been on board. Karen, how long have you been here? Four months, yeah. and that sparked a conversation. Matt and I were sitting here. I can't even remember how we were it came watching up. TikTok. Oh, and Karen came up. That must have been it. And I was like, Matt, what is she doing? What's going on with Karen? I was mm-hmm. like, Why not? Because Matt and Karen are related. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, You should text her and it call her. And that's how that worked out. So, yeah. and that's how it's crazy. I think that how- that work at. Eth- ethic also when we're talking about the hustle another way to say it would be work ethic i think that because you have to be self-motivated in this deal you definitely do and not everybody's suited to fall in your lap not everybody's suited for self-motivation no they need so a lot of people need to be told what time to be there what to do and yeah and all that but i noticed the people that you've mentored that they seem to have that same it's kind of not i'm saying i believe it was there already but also it seemed to have bled onto them yes. that hey this is the work ethic this yeah. is the hustle that, yeah. and so cuz those people i see in here frequently it is know. and it's a conversation that leads up you know like let's take melissa brown for an example i think i talked to her i feel like jordan was a senior in high school when she first called mm-hmm. me to talk. So that was two years ago. Yeah. Talked to me about getting her mm-hmm. real estate license. Mm-hmm. So again, someone I already knew, um, knew her a couple years before that point. So mm-hmm. then now we're looking at 
three to four years before she came on. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, and Kayla knew her very well and um, just kind of already knew she'd be a good fit. Mm-hmm. So really it's the, it, already knowing people before mm-hmm. they come on. There's been a couple that we didn't know at all. And I'll say those are the ones that didn't work out. Yeah. I think it is. It really uh, is. Now that I say really that. Well, yeah. that's, I, I kind of realized that through this conversation that it's really people you quote recruited versus them looking for you. It seems like the, yeah. the has worked. Out. I mean, even I know I've come across people who are just talking about th- that, that I like know. Shane, like, like Matt. Like Shane. Yeah. I mean, I recruited him for UConn and he was posting about Charles Barnes on, yeah. on Facebook. And I was like, hey, where are you going to hang your license? And yeah. Matt has known him. I've known him for, for a long time. I mean. Yeah. And so Shane's new. He's newer as well. And he's yeah. going to be in the UConn office. Yeah. I mean. And he's a, we can already tell he's a great fit. Yeah. So. You know, Matt, I'm like also a big fan of like customer service. You know, I think mm-hmm. that. I, that's what I call it. It's like going above, above and beyond on things. Where, yeah. What areas do you think that you provide excellent customer service? Burl is really big on this. I don't know. I mean, I try to. I know do you the do. Best that's for what everybody. I'm yeah. I mean, but I try to just stay on top of things and make sure we're getting things done in a timely manner. And I mean, you know, there's some people that you. I have a couple that I've shown 44 houses to. No. <laughs> and they are super sweet people. And we've got a house under contract now. I mean, but Amazing. sometimes it just takes patience too. Yeah. I mean, I know I have customers that I have shown one house to and they're like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And I have a friend that I even like, we looked at houses for several months and finally we were looking at some and I was like, okay, we're going to go around here and look at this one that you told me you didn't like, Mm -hmm. but we're here. So we're just going to go look at it. And then they were like, oh, you were right. Mm -hmm. We do like this house. This is it. And Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just, I think just getting to know your customers really well. And I think even some of them that, have just called me from referrals. My friend Brittany Flowers has been excellent for me. She has sent me several people. She's also bought a house with me, her and her husband, and they sold a house with me. Yeah. And one of the people that she sent me was my friends now, Nathan and Amanda Fight. I mean, I sold them a house. And in they UConn. have been I good. sold their house here. Yeah. I sold her other house here. I've got yeah. three transactions from just them. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, just... I think making relationships with people is a big part of the customer service. Mm-hmm. I don't think Matt realizes like he stays in contact with them. He communicates well. Um, I mean, you you do a good job. You work hard you. for them. So mm-hmm. no, that's and, very clear. And, you know, it's a, it, it's the biggest compliment you can get when you have someone like Brittany, who's like your biggest fan. Yeah. We were just talking about that with another client of mine. I was describing her. She's turned into a friend over the years. Yeah. That's usually what happens. And I was like, she's my biggest cheerleader. Yeah. I mean, and that's how Brittany is. With she you. really is. Yeah, she is. I mean, I've sold a home to one of her employees before. I mean, she's just sent people my way. I can always count on like if someone's looking for a realtor, she's going to be tagging me on it. I mean, yeah. it's it's great. And I mean, and I've known her for. Oh, probably like 15 years. I mean, so she's always supported me since I started to just trying to send business my way. But I, I do awesome. think that those friendships and just building relationships with your people that you don't even know yet is such a big deal. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember your first year of sales? Like what yes. the number was? <laughs> I yes he does. So my first full year was we're talking about three years, right? Three years. So first year, do you remember? My first part of the year, I didn't do hardly anything on Mm -hmm. the first part. But my first full year of sales, I think I sold around three million. Okay, second. Second year, which was this past year. I mean, I'm right at almost three. The second year, I sold four point six million. And this year, I'm already at like three million right now. Yeah, so that's awesome. I, I I think that like a lot of people are numbers. I am. I'm like somebody listening might say, "Okay, it's cool that Matt has great customer service. It's cool he hustled." But where is there a proof in that in the results? And the results are there yeah. by by. And I I wish you you may not know like your actual transactions because the average um, home sale here is it, it ranges from a hundred thousand to yeah. one hundred fifty thousand. We do not have these no. huge. I tell Stacy, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get a million in my first year. You're so, so silly. You will. I mean, sometimes we deal with $25,000 houses and stuff. I mean, yeah. so when you take into consideration that sometimes you're dealing with those, that 
$3 million looks like quite a bit of money then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot <laughs> sure. of hustle to get it to is. that. Yeah. It's a lot. So yeah, it's definitely. Um, so Matt, I, I forgot to do this on my last podcast, but I, how it can be, if people want to get in touch if they're with you and how can they reach out to you? What's the best way? Best way is to call or text me at 580-729-2160, or you can Snapchat me. You can DM me on Facebook. I TikTok. actually did have someone I sold a house one time on Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> you did? I did. It was my nephew's house on Morris Lane. That's yeah. awesome. The guy and reached Sarah, out to yeah. me and said, um, I need to see that tomorrow because I wanted a house on that street and I lost out on the other ones. That's awesome. Because we, I think, have had almost every house on that street for sale at one point in time. Yeah. I'm going to give you another insight that it's my personal insight and opinion, but the... Uh, I think that your social media and the meaning you, the videos and stuff that you mm-hmm. do, even if we're talking about TikTok, you know, you being yeah. funny and having a good time. I think that you, that here's what it speaks to me. First of all, I think it really works. I think you mm-hmm. do a great job. Thank you. I think that it, it, it's almost like a lo- people that, again, this is Burl's opinion that could be a little bit envious because they want to have the confidence to do some of the things that you do. Mm-hmm. And so there's, there's a little of, of that there and a, a positive envy. Uh, and so I think that it really works for you. And, and, and it's also unique. I, I think even when you're being funny, it's unique when you're being serious and talking about a particular house, it's, it's, but I think what the, the part that works in my opinion is the fact that a lot of people are scared, but want to do what you're doing. I did not want to do videos when I first started. Yeah. I refused to do, I did not want to do TikTok or anything like that. That, but I think you just have to build up to that too yeah. and get more confident with it. Um, and now he puts a wig on. Yeah. And yeah. I'm and imitates Stacey Carn Stricker. But <laughs> even that is like, <laughs> like, it's kind of, it's like crazy because you have the, it's, it's funny. It's also witty. Yeah. Uh, you know, the smart humor in there. And then, you know, also it's respectful. It's, it's like, people... I, I don't know how to explain when you put those things together, most people don't understand those concepts mm-hmm. and somehow intuitively you get the concept. It's like, I can make fun of you and it's really kind of degrading or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. then it doesn't, it doesn't come off very well to people. You know what I'm saying? But you're yeah. not like that. You're being smart. Yeah. But humorous. And then people engage. In engage, his yeah. right. And yeah, that yeah. causes engagement. Right. When you actually make fun of somebody in a negative way, then nobody wants to engage. No. In no. So but I, I just want to, I, I mean, that's my opinion, but I think it, you do a great job with that. Thank you. I do want to add something, though, about being present. We even do things like Moonlight Madness. I was just thinking so, about <laughs> It's important to be in the community doing things too. I know me and Stacy and Christy, I think, have done Moonlight Madness every year since we've been downtown. We're core up here. And me and her and Christy are the ones who come in and do it usually. But I was actually going to a concert in Oklahoma City, did not have my branding on or anything. And this girl I'm in Bricktown Brewery eating before the concert with several of my friends. And she goes, hey, you're from Elk City. You're a realtor, right? And I was like, yeah, I am. And I was like, are you from Elk City? She's like, oh, no. But we come out there all the time to trick or treat for Moonlight Madness. Mm -hmm. And so I recognized you from that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that even things like that are so important, especially when you're first starting out, because people don't always know who you are. But I mean, to be able to be recognized without branding or anything yeah. in a restaurant in Oklahoma City, I think that's a pretty big deal. I think mm-hmm. so, too. I mean, and we really stepped up our game this year for Moonlight Madness. We did. I we mean, had pictures that, and everything. Yeah. yeah. That's called, you know, another word for that is grassroots marketing. And, yes. and grassroots marketing, you cannot pay pay for. No. You just can't. Yeah. You can sit here and throw all kinds of money for billboards and every, every, as, mm-hmm. advertisement. But if you don't get involved in the community and be a part of what's going on, then people are not going to, it doesn't make the impact. Yeah, it does not. And in towns this size, it's really important to just be present in the community because these people realize, you know, big corporations aren't supporting their kids and all their stuff. It's us, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's Mm -hmm. a big thing to put your face out there for all that kind of stuff to you. Yeah, Yeah. it is. Good. Well, Matt, uh, thank you so much for being here. Are we going to do that? Yeah. Right, yeah. Game. yeah. Game. Matt hears all these. Um, Matt's heard about every one of our podcasts. We want your input. Okay. okay. So, Stacy, I would like to, uh, oh, oh. overrated, underrated, and or just right. And I also would like a little explanation, hopefully. Oh. Escalation clause. 
Overrated, underrated, or just right? Oh, they're stupid. I don't like them. <laughs> I feel like it's like a cheater's way of putting in an offer. Yeah. I don't like it. Can you define it for people who don't know what it well, means? Well, I think this can be confusing to people. But basically, it's like you're making an offer. And we don't see this in our market. But in Yukon. Mm-hmm. I have had one. Right. I saw this when I had a house listed up there and we had like seven offers. It was ridiculous. But they put in there like, um, I will beat any offer up to X amount of dollars. And Mm -hmm. no, I don't like it one bit. You put in your dollar amount, just like everybody else is putting in their dollar amount. I don't like it one bit. Okay. Matt? I'm the same way. And actually, the offer that I had that had the escalation clause was the highest and best offer that I had. I had a house under contract or up for sale in Yukon. It had 18 showings in one day, and we had nine mm-hmm. offers. And the highest offer actually had the escalation clause. So we didn't even have to use it, but I'm, I'm not like big it. on it. No, I don't you like just, it. You just Keep put there. in your best offer. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like mm-hmm. it. I'll tell you, like the sellers I was working with, they didn't love it either. They're mm-hmm. like, no. I don't like it. Because then one, how do we really know that they're pre-qualified for that amount? Because, you know, mm-hmm. they're also turning in their pre-qualified letter and it says what amount. It doesn't say mm-hmm. that it's whatever thousand dollars over the highest yeah. price. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't like them. Did you look these up? You looked this up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> All right. Number two, overrated, underrated, or just right. How about the color black? I'm 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 curious in two forms. One as a uh, apparel, clothes, and then the second is how about in a house? Matt and I are going to have the same opinion. Mm-hmm. I can okay. almost overrated, it. underrated, or just so right? underrated. Okay. I love black. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite color. Has been forever. Mm-hmm. That's why we have black cabinets before they were cool. Mm-hmm. Um, we just painted. Really, this was Matt's suggestion too on the flip house. I was struggling on paint colors because yeah. the roof is green. Mm-hmm. And so, we, I mean, that's tough. And I didn't want to do another white house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to be like everything else. So we painted it black. Yeah, it I love black. Too. Looks good. I can't wait till it's done. Matt? Black is underrated. It's I good. love a black a house. Black houses just look great. They're not your... Everyone wants a white house right now. They want to paint it white. And I don't. I want them black. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even in clothes, I mean, obvi- I wear black all the time. If you walk into my closet, the very few things you'll see are on like one little spot and the rest is all black. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I-, I had someone laugh at me one time when they walked into my closet and saw they're like, everything is black in here. And I was like, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. that's what I wear. <laughs> I, lo- I-, I want to paint our house black. Mm. Burl is not a big fan of black. Can you do black with cedar accents? Yes. I love that. We're going to do Cedar Post on the flip house. I think this look amazing. I I think this brings up a good point for, you know, somebody who's not as uh, up to date on color choices and whatever. You know, in other words, you made those decisions with the flip house. So how if somebody like potentially like let's say they're looking to the future and they want to sell their house. And they're thinking about exterior colors and they're thinking about interior colors. um, Is there a place that you would suggest they go? Is there a a thought behind that? Like, what would you suggest to them? Uh, Talk to the Somebody who's not real Mm -hmm. color. Yeah. So talk to a realtor. Yeah. Like, so, you know, Jerry, who I forgot to ask him yesterday to be on this. I met Mm -hmm. with him last night. Jerry, my, what y'all know, Jerry, Mm -hmm. my favorite flipper in the world. Um. He will ask me what color. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause we know what sells. I'm not going to say, you know, paint something crazy. Yeah. You know, so we, we do not always say what we love. We're going to say yeah. what people love. I sold a house that I don't know if you've drove by over on Avenue A and the people bought it to flip and we were talking about colors. I was like, I think you should do green. And they have done green with white trim, and they did cedar shutters and cedar accents everywhere, and it looks oh, so amazing. Mm-hmm. It looks 100% different than it did, too. Yeah, I think that's great. It Especially is. on a flip. I think it's really good to go an extreme yes. from what it did look like. Mm, I think that's a good point. And I think being bold, too, because mm-hmm. people want houses that don't look like cookie cutters right now. Yeah. Yeah, we were looking at, we are driving by, some. I think we are in Oklahoma City or somewhere in that area, and we are driving by... Oh, houses Yukon. And it was, it was like, like, I mean, yeah. we're actually looking at the back of them, and they looked 
every single and one of them. And a lot of, of your them. builders up there are just throwing those things up so yeah. fast that they all look the same anyway. They order it. almost like apartments, yeah. but not apartments. I think they're, exactly. du- they're duplexes is what yeah. those were, and they're leasing them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm all not, right, the last uh-huh. one, overrated, underrated, and I might have asked you this before, but I'll ask again, or just right, white buffalo. Oh, so underrated. That's so funny. We talked about them on our right. Exploring Thursday. Yeah. I love white buffalo. Yeah. They're hot chocolate. I know we're about to get out of hot chocolate season. It's the best. And they're sandwiches. Oh, I've wow. only eaten there twice this week, so I feel like I did really. Which is an improvement really from your every day of the week. I agree. Matt, I, I should get a punch. They need to do a punch card. Right. <laughs> Repeat customers. <laughs> Matt, do you have a thought on white buffalo? I think it's underrated too. I mean, I oh. do love white buffalo. I love several of their sandwiches. Their hot chocolate. I'm not big on coffee usually, but hot chocolate is. I like hot chocolates and teas and stuff like that, and they're great. Yeah. I could like. I would like the hot chocolate to be a little bit hotter. Sometimes it's warm. White buffalo, if you will do a little bit hotter hot chocolate. And then uh, also, you know, we'd love to for you guys to sponsor, to sponsor the us. show. Yeah. That'd um, be amazing. I, I think that actually white buffalo has done something. I, I can't put my finger on it exactly. Maybe it's the fact they have good food that's not that expensive. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's it. But part of it's like in a world of I don't know how many coffee places they have found a way to stand out, you know, and, and especially in our small town, it, think, it's overrun with coffee places, yeah. but they have found a way to stand out amongst and them. And I think what makes them stand out is their stuff is not in a package and just thrown into a heater, little convection oven yeah. thing. Some of your more commercial places that's what you get is something that was taken out of a package and heated up for you theirs isn't like that and i think that's a big difference in their food is Mm -hmm. that it is right like homemade almost and i know their bagels come in from chicago really those bagels are all from chicago so i mean Mm. lots of different things that they do Do different i started doing i've noticed this this week yeah let's be real i go every week so this started this week so i'll know this they put notes in Oh, I saw it on the sandwich you bought me. So thank you. And then I had notes on the napkins today. I think those things have set it apart. (laughs) You know, what's interesting, you usually do drive-thru. I'm not, I don't like drive-thru as much as you do. But if you go into the lobby or the restaurant part of it, if you go inside, then it's very simple, crazy simple. Yes. Crazy simple. They do have a simple concept. They have a little meeting room. But they, you look at decoration on the wall, it's not flooded. I came from, like, I used to be in the restaurant business and I worked for a chain for a long time. Like, Mm -hmm. we're talking about, uh, casual dining and the, the, the trend back then was put as much shit on the wall as you can possibly (laughs) put on there. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And yet you look at the contrast of you're walking into White Buffalo, big building really in the gist of things and, with wide open concept, but hardly anything yeah. on the and wall. Concrete yeah. Very, floors. Yeah. 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 Very simple. Yeah. And I think that simplicity actually, because I've been to the one in Weatherford. Yeah. Uh, Same and, thing. And, Same. and, and Altus. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And and you think about it, it is a very simple, you know, concept. Right. And it, it's like you almost get the feeling they put the money somewhere else and that and that's in the quality it's in of the product. Them. Yeah. And so I, I don't know, I'm a big fan of it, but it has changed from the trends of the past, which is clutter the walls kind of, you know. Yeah. That's a good point. It's it kind of like the like T G I Fridays. They did that same thing. Mm-hmm. Well the 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 chain that I'm talking about is I work for Bennigan's. Yeah, those were like that same era. Yeah. Yeah. Chili's Bennigan's, you know. Yeah. And now Applebee's. Chili's take has taken on a new look. Right. Yeah, I think they started to realize that clutter because you know this, you put clutter all over the wall that will get dirty. dust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dirt, dust, and it you does. put it on the ceiling where it's hard to reach. Yeah. But yeah. you go to Becca de Pepe and they still have all that stuff on the walls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that part of it is like, I think that's that new deal. Cleaner, cleaner yeah. look. Yes. Kind of like our look. office. Yeah. yeah. I mean, truthfully, I was looking around because it's a lot like this. And yeah, platform. we don't have much on the walls at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to come up with one. Oh, you got some? I, I thought we were going to say we're done. No, go okay, we can be done. No, go ahead. You got it. No. 
You don't. I'll save it for next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Matt, Matt thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate you, it. Matt Brooks. It's, it's about time you got on the podcast. I know. I'm so out. rude. Actually, I think it was Matt that was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be on it. <laughs> I knew I knew it would be a good interview, and I think actually people can learn from it the, a lot yeah. from it. So Matt Brooks will be floating back and forth between Yukon and Elk City yeah. next yes. month. Yep. Well, good. You I guys, can't wait. Me either. All right. You guys have a great day. Thanks. Thanks.